As Catalyst Research just exposed, the campaign that emerged late last year, running across the US, UK, and EU, constitutes a dubious and damning assault on Qatar, considered the largest initiative to be aimed at a Gulf country, disseminating xenophobic, anti Muslim, and anti Qatar propaganda and disinformation, particularly amidst its mediation efforts between Israel and Hamas. The origin of the contents remains vague, although its promoters include so-called human rights activists, Christian Zionists, and far-right accounts like Visgrad24 on X. The material is evidently designed to capitalize on far-right grievances ahead of the European elections, potentially making it as one of the largest social media influence operations targeting EU countries in terms of ad spending. The campaign utilized a range of strategic tactics, including Times Square billboards, fake petitions, and the establishment of websites like Shame on Qatar, and a very, very low-taste, low-budget, and low-quality, shallow Orientalist song. Shame on Qatar website accuses Qatar of funding terrorists and calls for a boycott of Qatar-owned entities like Harrods, Paris Saint-Germain, and the New York Plaza Hotel. It gained attention when it was featured in an advertisement at a prominent American conservative political action conference in February advocating for sanctions on Qatar and portraying it as a security threat. Another strategic tactic employed in the campaign was the engagement of influential social figures to share impactful photos during significant conventions. For instance, educator Katrina Lantosweck shared a powerful photo at a religious freedom summit in Washington, featuring a poster related to the campaign. However, she claimed that she was asked to promote it. By who? By Johnny Moore, an American evangelical leader and, of course, an advocate for Israel. When questioned about his association with the campaign, guess what? Moore ceased to respond. The network behind this propaganda and disinformation campaigns against Qatar has employed a range of messaging strategies with the specific aim to isolate it economically, academically, and politically while exploiting sensitive issues to advance their hidden agenda. While these messages include baseless claims of Qatar supporting for mass immigration and Islamist radicalization, another message aims to associate Qatar with unfounded allegations of supporting terrorism. The ads which are part of the campaign encompassed a variety of languages, including Arabic, Spanish, English, and French. I'm shocked there was no Hindi in it. And were displayed across various platforms such as Facebook, X, YouTube, and TikTok. According to the research, a large-scale operation took place on Facebook, which is owned by Meta. A minimum of 978 Facebook ads were hosted across 25 Facebook pages, with the support of around 44 additional burner Facebook pages that played sponsorship roles. The pages called for Qatar's political isolation and accused the country of promoting terrorism and encouraging Muslim migration to Europe. Margarita Franklin, Meta Security Public Affairs Director, confirmed that the network responsible for this campaign was discovered and removed. Despite consistent breaches of Facebook advertisement standards, the network demonstrated unwavering resilience. Pages taken down were often restored or migrating, continuing their campaign for a minimum period of six months, reaching around 41 million people. Advanced technology empowered AI-generated content to play a substantial role, fabricating narratives that were both compelling and misleading. This encompassed the production of AI-generated images and videos capable of effectively conveying deceptive information or narratives. All the evidence uncovered strongly indicates a near certain connection to the Vietnamese digital asset theft trading and proxy service economy, targeting audiences worldwide. Researchers discovered that some of the pages involved in the campaign could be traced back to a Vietnamese marketing outfit called LT Media. However, representatives from LT Media denied any involvement, stating that they sold the pages to unknown customers through Telegram. 
The representative also claimed to have been hacked and lost access to Facebook. Let's have a moment of silence for this person's creativity. Given these findings, one must wonder what lies beneath the surface of yet another global shadow campaign aimed at Qatar and who's truly pulling the strings in this covert operation.